As Melly's trial date slowly approaches, we review some of the legal counsel that Melly has hired to represent him and the things they had to say regarding the case, one of which has since left the case. In October 2018, when news broke out of the tragic deaths of Juan W. Melly's childhood friends, Sack Chaser and Juvie, lawyer Bradford Cohen, who also represented Kodak Black, DMX, Vanilla Ice, and many other artists, chose to represent Melly. In addition to Cohen representing him at the time, lawyer Mitchell Polay was said to also be representing him. In early April 2019, Melly added a new member to his legal team. On top of the two existing attorneys, the newest member he added to his legal team was Jason Rogers William. Jason worked with Boosie during his murder trial and which ended in acquittal in 2012. Jason said, I feel very confident. We have a strong team at Bradford Cohen and Nicole Burdett and myself. Williams confidently relayed to XXL. We really feel good about it. This is a process and we're hoping that it's a fair process and all the evidence comes out. On February 12, 2020, Bradford Cohen jumped on his Instagram page to offer his thoughts on Melly's case since he would no longer be representing him. In his post, he wrote, This will be a very interesting trial. I'm no longer representing Melly in this matter, but I predict a not guilty based on all the evidence I have reviewed. Cohen went on to say that Melly has new lawyers handling the case and believes that the rapper will be able to post bond because prosecutors had weak evidence. He has some very fine attorneys that I believe will be able to secure a favorable verdict, Cohen added. I also think that bond will be granted given the weakness of the evidence. Never rush to judgment in the case until you see everything. Granted, this is from 2020. Jason Rogers Williams, who is one of the few lawyers representing Juan W. Melly in his first murder case, believes the rapper's lyrics can be used against him in court. It's unclear, but lyrics certainly been a large part of what has come from that office right now, Williams explained to XXL on April 5th. They have not used lyrics in court yet, but that seems to be the plan based on what we've heard. Having previously representing Boosie, Williams is familiar with the notion of rap lyrics being used as evidence in criminal cases. Prosecutors in Boosie's 2011 murder trial famously brought up multiple songs that the Baton Rouge rapper spit about murder using lyrics to help make their case against the rapper. Williams sees the potential parallels between the tactics of Boosie's prosecutors and prosecutors in Melly's case. When you look at the police behavior, when you look at the allegations that somehow rap lyrics are potential evidence or suggestive culpability or real life actions, those similarities are present in this case as well. And they were present in Boosie's case, Williams said. He continued, the thing that some law enforcement folks just haven't realized yet is that rap lyrics are just lyrics. Just like rock lyrics are just lyrics. Just like Al Pacino and his script and Scarface are just words on the page. However, when the person who's rapping is young and African American, they somehow want to make a leap that these things are not cre just creative. Both in and out of court, Broward County prosecutors have frequently referred to a video taken on an iPhone as a confession by Jamel Demons, the artist known as Juan W. Melly. It's clear prosecutors believe this is a key piece of evidence in this case. In reality, this so-called confession video features Melly doing what many music fans do, repeating the lyrics of a favorite song by one of his favorite artists, the song 4.30 AM by Kevin Gates. Thousands of similar videos are uploaded daily to platforms like TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Whether due to cultural ignorance, a lack of investigator rigor, or purposeful deception, it appears police and prosecutors have centered their pro prosecution of extremely serious charges on an embarrassing, avoidable mistake. Raven Liberty, 
Another one of Melly's lawyers had this to say about the use of the lyrics being used to paint Melly in a negative light. Violent imagery and music is not new. For the prosecution to use this video in a criminal proceeding is as credible as using a video of someone singing Johnny Cash's Falsam Prison Blues. The lyrics, I quote, I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Or Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Mama, I killed a man, put a gun against his head, pulled the trigger, and now he's dead. In a prosecution. The reliance on this legal gimmick, in effect, putting a specific type of music on trial, highlights the evidence, highlights the weakness of their case and the general lack of evidence. Excuse me. Moreover, the racial aspects of this type of misleading selective prosecution are painfully obvious. In closing, it is worth highlighting that despite playing this so-called confession video in court and citing it in public court documents, the prosecution has repeatedly failed to, failed to share a copy of the video in the discovery process as required under law. So as you see, these are all the statements, or at least some of the statements I was able to cherry pick of what Juan W. Melly's defense team, his legal team, had to say surrounding the evidence and the things being used against him. Again, this is only to highlight the team that he has with him going to bat for him come March 7th. Now, the team is minus one person, which was Bradford Cohen. For whatever reason, Bradford Cohen chose to step down from the case. And he's said that he's confident in the team that he has, I mean, or that Melly has, that is going on his behalf to fight his case. So with that being said, we'll see what that looks like. That's even if that if they err, if they decide to air his trial. But yeah, that's it. If you're not caught up on what why Melly's locked up, click this video right here and it should give you more details. Until next time.